Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for being here this morning. Um, it is my pleasure to present to you today the platform that we've been developing to uh, further inform surgical decision making and to eventually be able to assist in the selection of targeted therapy for the treatment of uh, cancer. So cancer surgery still plays a critical role in the treatment of cancer. Uh, the vast majority of patients diagnosed with a solid tumor will have surgery as the first step in their treatment. For many patients, in fact, this has the potential to effect a cure for their cancer. And, but for patients requiring further treatment, the tissue obtained during surgery, which is sent to pathology, can provide information that can further guide adjuvant therapy. And this information is increasingly important as molecular markers are now used to guide uh, treat targeted uh, therapy. I'm so sorry, I'm offset here. <laughs> um, so this is an operating room in 1923 at the Brigham, and this is in uh, our state-of-the-art operating room, um, the Advanced Multimodality Image Guided Operating Suite, the Amigo, at the Brigham. And uh, in my biased view, the difference between those two operating rooms is uh, actually in the amount and the complexity of technology that we're bringing to be able to provide information on the cancer during surgery to localize and better delineate the tumor. Um, but despite this, the, well, the, the Amigo actually provides uh, the ideal platform to be able to further develop imaging technologies and validate them and bringing those technologies that would be more accessible in uh, other center. So we have uh, cited in the uh, operating room in the Amigo a mass spectrometer already a few years ago that will allow to characterize tissue in real time. So the advantage of using mass spectrometry as an analytical tool is that mass spectrometry is an extremely sensitive uh, uh, analytical platform, but we can also in principle analyze any molecule as every single molecule has a mass. So the applications we have developed to uh, implement mass spectrometry for surgery and oncology, and more specifically here for neurosurgery and neuro-oncology, uh, the first one is still this very simple but yet very complex question as to the surgical margins to be able to tell tumor versus non-tumor. We've also been developing diagnostic and prognostic information such as tumor type, grade, uh, be able to predict behavior of the tumor, such as recurrence and progression. And where we're really going with this is to eventually be able to predict response to targeted therapy. So to this effect, we have started implementing our platform to the study of drug distribution and response in clinical trials with an emphasis on, on brain penetrance um, and a correlation to, um, uh, to, to, to response. So the, um, the current surgical workflow for brain tumors involves um, the biopsying of, of the tumor at the beginning of surgery, and this piece of tissue is typically sent for frozen section analysis, which takes about 30 minutes and provides limited information as to what the tissue uh, might be. Once the surgeon has confirmation that this is in fact, a solid tumor that is operable, then they will continue the surgical resection. And in the Amigo, we have the luxury of having an intraoperative MRI so that the surgeon can, toward the end of resection, assess um, if, if, if surgery is complete. But that takes at least 60 minutes to be able to acquire um, that MRI. So we can only perform this one time during surgery. And even though the information is extremely valuable for um, assess assessing the, the extent uh, of resection, uh, we cannot do it uh, so often. So this is where the mass spectrometer plays a critical role, is that we can acquire molecular information on the surgical tissue on the seconds time scale. And with that short time scale, we can now um, ask many questions during surgery and repeat the analysis as, as much as the surgeon uh, requires. 
So the premise of our work to eventually allow the continuous um, molecular analysis of the surgical cavity is to converse, uh, convert existing surgical devices to become sampling devices. So in this case, instead of sending the aspirated surgical tissue to waste, the material could be sent directly to the mass spectrometer for analyses. And this is where it went blank again. So I was going to show you <laughs> on this slide, and they, they, they fixed it this morning, but it's gone again. Uh, but basically, to validate our workflow, we use uh, um, neural navigation, which allows to basically correlate pay, uh, features from a preoperative imaging to features on a patient's uh, brain or skull. So every position that we take a small specimen that we send for analysis, we can digitally register on the MRI. And then this is all happening like this, <laughs> just trust me. And then basically we acquire <laughs> a very complex mass spectrum with hundreds and thousands of peaks. And there are really two ways that we can analyze that spectrum. One is what we call a targeted analysis in which we can follow a very specific and unique molecule and the other one, we can mine through that complex data using machine learning strategies. So our most mature protocol at the Brigham is the one where we do targeted analysis, where we can follow the, the analysis of a well-validated small oncometabolite to hydroxyglutarate. And we have shown that it the intensity of that metabolite correlates with the presence of the cancer cells. So now the, our, our surgeon can actually use that information to inform surgical decision-making um, to better delineate the tumor. So the other approach is to use a multivariate data analysis uh, machine learning approach. And over the past 10 years, we've been acquiring reference data on a number of brain tumors and developed ca classifiers using uh, different data pre-processing workflows and machine learning algorithms that we can now apply to classify new data and then uh, further visualize our classification results over segmented MRI. So basically our integrated platform now allows to infuse quantitative molecular information into multi-parametric MRI. So this strategy actually provides both the opportunity to validate the use of mass spectrometry to provide diagnostic information with a more accessible technology that is current th than what is currently available, but also provides the opportunity to further inform our current understanding of MR-based imaging and perhaps contribute to the better delineation of the extent of tumor based on radiologic imaging, which is still a very powerful non-invasive method. So we have now implemented similar workflows to investigate the distribution of drugs in the brain and how it affects response to targeted therapy. So for example, here we have a patient uh, that was treated with 100 milligrams of drug daily for eight days prior to surgery at recurrence. So at the time of surgery, the surgeon took two specimens from the contrast enhancing region, and then we subjected those two specimens to a detailed um, mass spectrometry imaging analysis in correlation with histopathology. So the pathologist had delineated the, the central part of that specimen here as being normal infiltrative brain with, um, with, with the upper region here to be actually the tumor. So in green, we can see the signal of the drug in contrast to the vasculature here. And while we see that the drug was able to escape the vasculature, most of the drug was found in the normal part of the tissue and not um, effective for treating the, the tumor cells. So now if we combine this type of approach, and mind this is one spectrum you could have seen earlier, is that in our spectra we have hundreds to thousands um, of peaks, and the drug signal is this very small peak here, the blood signal is this one here, and now we have all of this information that we can start tapping into to assess response and correlate drug distribution with response at the single pixel um, level. So um, in summary, we've already reached clinical implementation of a single well-validated biomarker for the analysis of the majority of low-grade glioma. We've now passed also the mid-trial point in a clinical trial to assess the value of using mass spec for the evaluation of surgical margins for breast cancer, and the results are very promising. And we've also developed reference systems for the analysis of multiple other brain tumors constituting um, the core of our IP portfolio. So we've since undertaken 
uh, together with Dr. Tempeni, actually the analysis of prostate uh, tissue, and we see great potential in, um, in looking at skin lesion. So this is what we actually need for the broad dissemination of clinical program and eventually multi-site uh, clinical trials. Thank you for your attention and I'd be happy to discuss. <laughs>